Unitree Robotics just dropped a full-body teleoperation platform that lets you control a humanoid robot as if it's your own body. This isn't remote control, it's embodiment. But while that demo is nearly flawless, a viral video shows one of these same robots failing spectacularly at a simple task. Today, we're breaking down that paradox. We'll also look at Xpeng's new battery-powered humanoid, the underwater bots cleaning up global shipping, and why a major robotics company just laid off 14% of its staff. Let's dive in. First, let's talk about a development that feels like it's pulled from a cyberpunk novel. Unit Tree Robotics, the folks behind those incredibly agile robots, have just unveiled their full-body teleoperation platform. The demo video is genuinely something to see. It shows their G1 humanoid robot, under direct human remote control, performing a range of wireless household tasks. We're talking about washing dishes, operating a robotic vacuum, folding clothes, and carefully carrying a cup of water. But it doesn't stop at chores. The same platform allows the G1 to transition into dynamic sports movements, from football and martial arts to boxing, showcasing a really impressive physical range. This capability hinges on a new patent for a robot joint control system based on motion capture equipment. The system is designed to efficiently and accurately map human movements directly onto the robot, which creates this very seamless, intuitive form of human-robot collaboration. The operator's intentions are expressed naturally, leading to fluid and responsive interaction. Now, what makes this a potential game-changer are the practical details. The platform offers true full-body teleoperation, mirroring the user's movements in real time, including walking, reaching, and even subtle gestures. It supports integration with motion capture suits, popular VR and AR headsets, and depth cameras for that intuitive control. A crucial and often overlooked feature is its data acquisition capability. While the robot is being operated, it captures comprehensive full-body motion data. This data is a goldmine for developers, ideal for training future AI models on human-like behaviors and improving overall robot dexterity. And this leads to the most accessible part. The platform is built for Unitree's own robots, like the Compact G1 and the more advanced H1, and Unitree has made open source code available on GitHub for teleoperation setups. With the G1 starting at around $16,000, this moves the technology from a closed lab experiment into an open developer's playground, and it's actually available for trials right now. Shifting focus to another major player, the Chinese EV startup Xpeng has thrown its hat into the ring with a new generation of its iron humanoid robot, and it's making a strong case for being one of the most anthropomorphic designs out there. Its standout moment was a demonstration of a smooth, silent catwalk gait that was so fluid, it actually sparked an intense online debate. The movement was so lifelike that people questioned if there was a human inside the robot suit. The speculation got so widespread that an employee had to unzip its artificial mesh skin on camera to reveal the robotic internals and confirm it was, in fact, a machine. So, what's powering this very human-like machine? The brain of this second-gen iron robot is a set of three custom Turing AI chips that, when combined, deliver a substantial 3,000 TOPS of computing power. Its body is equipped with a remarkable 82 degrees of freedom, and its dexterous hand features the world's tiniest harmonic driver, giving it 22 degrees of freedom, which is on par with Tesla's Optimus. But perhaps the most significant technological claim is its power source. Xpeng is powering the new iron robot with an all-solid-state battery. They state this battery can achieve an energy density exceeding 500 watt-hours per kilogram. To put that in perspective, that's roughly double the capacity of the battery reported to power the Tesla Optimus, all within the same physical footprint. This high-density power has allowed Xpeng to miniaturize other components and equip the robot with what they call a humanoid spine and bionic muscles, all wrapped in an artificial flexible skin to achieve that high level of human likeness. Scheduled for mass production in late 2026, 
Xpeng plans to monetize iron by deploying it in roles like tourist guide, traffic police officer, and shopping advisor, positioning it as a direct and stylish challenger in the humanoid robotics space. Now, let's balance those impressive demos with a dose of reality from a viral experiment. A YouTuber named Whistlin Diesel recently put a Unitree G1 robot to the test in a familiar setting, the kitchen. His instruction was simple. He handed the robot a pan containing stir-fry, said he'd be back after playing a game, and left. What happened next was a stark contrast to the controlled corporate videos. The robot struggled to manipulate the pan, ultimately spilling the food all over the floor. The situation escalated when the G1 then slipped and fell after stepping on the mess it had created. This is a robot valued at around $80,000, equipped with sophisticated 3D LiDAR sensors and depth cameras for high-level perception. Yet, it was defeated by the unpredictable chaos of a real-world kitchen. Online, the reaction was a mix of humor and sober reflection, with many calling it the most honest robot test they'd seen. It perfectly highlights the current frontier. While teleoperation is advancing rapidly, genuine autonomous adaptation to unstructured environments remains a monumental challenge. Meanwhile, in a completely different domain, a company called Hullbot is demonstrating how robotics can tackle a massive environmental problem right now. This Australian ocean robotics firm just secured $16 million in a Series A funding round. Their focus is on the global shipping industry, and they use autonomous underwater robots for a critical job, proactively cleaning and inspecting the hulls of large vessels. The mission addresses a major issue known as biofouling, which is the accumulation of marine organisms on a ship's surface. Even a thin layer creates significant drag, forcing ships to burn over 20% more fuel. Given that the shipping industry accounts for roughly 1 billion tons of CO2 emissions annually, this isn't a small problem. Hullbot's service delivers proven average fuel savings of 15%, directly cutting operational costs for fleets while reducing emissions. They've already cleaned over 82 vessels across the US, EU, and Asia Pacific, and their impact was recognized with the Australian Good Design Award of the Year, an honor that saw them beat out global giants like Tesla and Hyundai. Now, let's talk about the part of a robot that I find most fascinating, the hands. Getting a machine to walk is one thing, but getting it to say, thread a needle or handle a delicate object? That's the real magic trick. And a Swiss company called Mimic Robotics, a spin-off from the technical powerhouse ETH Zurich, just got a massive $16 million vote of confidence to solve this exact puzzle. Instead of building a whole expensive humanoid, they're focusing on the star players, the hands and the AI brain that controls them. They're developing what's called a foundation model, and pairing it with incredibly dexterous robotic hands. Think of it as giving a robot the equivalent of a surgeon's fine motor skills and the intuition to use them. The best part? They're already in the real world, quietly running pilots with Fortune 500 manufacturers and global car brands. It seems the race for useful robots isn't just about who builds the best body, but who builds the best brains for the hands. All right, time for some business reality check. Because not every story in robotics is a straight line up and to the right. The sector is having some growing pains, and the latest sign is from Teradyne Robotics, the parent company of two huge names, Universal Robots and Mobile Industrial Robots. They just had to let go of 14% of their staff. This is actually their second round of layoffs this year, which tells you the market is a bit of a roller coaster. The company said they grew really fast expecting a boom, but the global automation market, especially in Europe, has slowed down. Basically, the customers aren't buying as many robots as they thought they would. But here's the interesting pivot in this plot twist. Teradyne isn't giving up. They're doubling down on AI. They revealed that over 8% of their sales are already for AI-related products, and their new goal is to make their cobots the go-to platform for AI-driven work cells. So, the message is clear. If you want to sell robots these days, they'd better be smart robots. And that's the state of play. We've got robots you can literally embody, 
others so realistic they start online conspiracy theories, and a few that remind us this is all still incredibly hard work. From the ocean floor to the factory line, the push for useful automation is full of brilliant, messy, and utterly fascinating challenges. This is just the beginning. Let me know which development you think will have the biggest impact down in the comments. Thanks for watching.